Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep I think this is number 47 I think and the point of these, if you haven't had the pleasure of listening to my incredibly exciting voice before, the point of these sessions is that I just talk to you or talk at you about pretty much nothing just stuff and basically you just get bored that's it and you can drift off into a nice lovely sleep I'm actually quite tired myself. I got up quite early today. Well, I didn't get up early, but I didn't have enough sleep. So I, I went to bed about 6.15. Or 6... I'm not sure if it was 6.15 or might have been a little bit later, I mean, 6, 17, it might have been, could have even been 19 minutes past 6, that's in the morning. But then, that's the time I looked at the clock on my laptop. But then I went into the bathroom and made myself beautiful for, for bedtime. So, put, add another 30 seconds onto that. So it might have been, yeah, it might have been 20 past 6, possibly even 21 minutes past, I'm really not sure. Um, I didn't know I was going to get question, <laughs> questioned on it. I didn't know, you know when you're not sure, you don't realise you're going to actually need to remember something. Then... You know, it's for example, if someone said to you, oh, uh, during your bus journey, I'd, you know, notice how many uh, blue cars you see. And, you know, at the end of the journey, you can say, well, uh, maybe, a, maybe you saw three, maybe you saw six, maybe you saw 14, and maybe... 32 you know it could be any number of blue cars and maybe you know you'd kind of log them you might have even had a pad and just crossing them you know when you do one two three four and then you cross through to make five so maybe you did it like that and then when you got asked the question how many blue cars did you see you know at the end of the journey you could say, well, okay, and you say, well, it's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 28 blue cars. I don't know why anyone would ask you to do such a thing, but if you hadn't been asked to notice how many blue cars there were, before the journey and then you just were on the bus planning to buy some fruit maybe you haven't had any fruit for a while and you know maybe you had maybe you have had fruit but there was a specific type of fruit that you suddenly got the urge for maybe you'd had some pancakes and you had some lemon you know, some actual proper lemon on the pancakes and you suddenly got an urge to to start eating lemons. 
I remember when I was when I was young, I used to get muddled up between melons and lemons because it sounded very similar, and it's the same spelling, but the L with lemons, obviously L is E, it's L E M O N S, and melons M E L O N S. Oh, has melons got two L's? I don't know. I can't. Hear. The first time I think I ever had a melon was, I think, when I was about eight, eight years old. And where I lived, there used to be a park just around the corner. It wasn't far. And I could smell. It was a Saturday, kind of late morning, early afternoon. And I wasn't at school that day because I was never at school on a Saturday. And there was this, because it wasn't open on a Saturday, and there was the park. And in the corner, near where the swings were, there was a, there was a smell coming from there, so I kind of couldn't, it's not that I didn't have bad eyesight, it's just the things were quite a long way away. Because I think it's, it's important to distinguish between um, eyesight issues and actually distance. Because I think it would have been, I'd have had weird eyes and a weird eyesight if I was able to see the other side of the park as clearly as I see my own hand right now. Because then I mean I'd have some kind of special um, superpowers or something, and that'd be really unusual. Imagine if you had that kind of vision, and you could see something really long distance, but that long distance really clearly. It'd be really difficult to read a book, unless you had really long arms. like Mr. Tickle from the Mr. Men books. And then this uh, park, I kind of walked up. I might have been with my brother or brothers. I might have been with both my brothers or I might not have been. I may have been with one of my friends. But anyway, we walked to the park and as I got closer, I got the smell, lovely smell of food, cooked food and burgers and hot dogs, sausages and stuff. And I thought, oh. And I remember, I remember saying to my friend, or him saying to me, what do you mean, ooh? Why are you going ooh for? And I said, well, um, that's the sound I make when I smell something that that delights my nostrils and he said that's weird I said you're weird and then we just carried on walking and as we got closer to where it was a crowd of people it wasn't like a big group but it was about 30 maybe 30 people like all gathered and I didn't quite understand what was going on you know were they worshipping the swings I don't know it's National Swing Day I really wasn't sure um, but it turned out when I got up there there was people with barbecues and they were Americans so some of the people there were Americans and they were celebrating Independence Day American Independence Day and they were making, they were basically give, making this food and giving it out to people. And part of what they had was these melons. And they were beautiful. I mean, I didn't have a whole melon because they're too big, aren't they? You can't, how do you eat a whole melon? I suppose unless you just eat bit by bit, I suppose you could, but yeah, it was too much. I was only eight. A melon was the size of my, bigger than my head back then. 
Um, so I had this melon and I couldn't believe how beautiful it was. Tasted so fresh. And this was on a, this was on like a summer's day. It was a really nice, bright, blue sky, sunny, warm. And I really liked that melon. So I suppose before I go any further, before I start, I should just let you know, only listen to this or watch the video when you can safely close your eyes because this uh, let me bore you to sleep may cause boredom, which may lead to sleep. So it's just, you know, it's, it's something I try to say every time, uh, not every time, or every conversation I have, but you know, when I'm making these videos, because if I was having a job interview and I say, oh, only listen to me if you can safely close your eyes, they might not give me the job, but it's been a while since I had an interview though. I think the last job interview I had, oh no, wait a minute. Yeah, I did apply for a job at Sainsbury's. Uh, it's a big superstore. And if you're in England and you're wondering why I'm uh, describing what Sainsbury's is, it's because I, I got a lot of people that listen to me and watch me from other countries that may not have a Sainsbury's. So I, I can't assume that everybody knows what references I'm making although I will assume sometimes so if I say you know I had to buy some new underpants due to an accident then you're going to understand what underpants are you know just as an example So, I don't know what you think of my hair. My hair's getting a bit long now. I technically you might think, well, it's not really long, is it? It's quite short, but it's longer than it was before when it was shorter. And it's, it's now getting to the point where I perhaps need to cut it or maybe leave it. So it's, it's really kind of at that point where either I need to cut it or not cut it. Or kind of, it doesn't really matter either way. You know, it's that crucial point. And I was thinking, because as if you're watching the video, you can see that I've got, a, my beard is growing back with a, uh, gonna say with a vengeance but that's a bit dramatic it's growing just naturally growing and I was thinking about letting it grow really bushy and maybe then letting my hair grow and when my hair grows it goes curly and then it gets bushy and it's it's a bit of you know I could basically end up my face and my head could end up looking like a a testicle you know an uncared for testicle untrimmed although it's quite hard to trim testicles but hey I don't want to talk about that The thing is, I thought, shall I grow my hair long? Long, long, you know, like proper down to my shoulders, middle of my back. And let my beard grow massive. I suppose it will keep away gold diggers. But I don't know. 
is that kind of that fine line between wanting to let myself go completely and not take any care in my appearance and just completely let myself go and on the other side of that fine line hoping to one day uh, have physical contact with a woman again it's you know so I don't know at the moment the letting myself become a big hairy monster seems to be the the way I'm going at the moment is something about just being a furball a, fur, a furball is it seems to appeal to me I want to get to the point where you can just this is a small bit of me that's actually that you can see and the rest is just hair I get so long my hair can get so long that it even kind of covers up most of my face as well I think that would be funny so that's possibly what I'm going to do maybe just for a year just see how it goes so maybe between now and the end of next year because we're now middle of October so near the end of the year now nearly so maybe if I just keep growing my hair and my beard don't, sh don't trim or shave or anything for you know the whole of next year and then I can see what I look like and then if I change my mind and decide maybe I'd like to have some human contact again you know just the touch of another human then maybe I'll, I'll, I'll shave it off or trim it but yeah, I, f I like the idea of. I just like the idea of being sitting on a train and people looking over at me and not really being sure what I am. What is it? Is it human? So yeah, I like that. That appeals to me. I've had lots of different hair experiences. So when I was when I was really young, probably about six, five, six, I had really, really, really big hair. Really, really big hair. But that was kind of the way back in the seventies. If so, if I'd been able to, I would have had a big beard as well. But you know, I was five. There was limits to what I was able to produce. But hair on my head, and at that time, my partner went down to about there, like the you know the, where my hair, the root of my hair was really low, and my forehead has grown. It's quite weird because as my hair has receded over the years it's a little bit like how the world has broken up you know the plates moved I don't know maybe millions of years ago and broke the continents or whatever so that you can see how they might have fitted together in the past and it's like I've got these little islands where there's maybe a little group of hairs but then there's one hair on its own and I can see it's, it's about that much of a gap where it's just receded it's just lonely and that lonely little hair it's like as if it's shipwrecked or something just there a hair but at the moment it hasn't evaporated to a level 
that's really concerned me. When I was younger, I, you know, pretty, when I hit 30, 29, 30, I started to notice the, the movement, the retreat of the hair follicles. It's like, you know, they'd been going to battle with my eyebrows and they decided to retreat. You know, my eyebrows were, had won the war, the follicle war. And so now my, my eyebrows are starting to sprout out weird hairs, like, you know, showing off, like they're showing off. Look what I can do. Yeah, you know, the, all the rest of the follicles of my head are just like retreating. Okay, you win, you win eyebrows. And I think the beard, the beard puts my hair off as well. I thought it might work the other way around. I thought if I grew a beard, maybe the hair on my head would get a bit of encouragement, feel a bit more confident maybe to start moving forward again. Not too far, I don't want it all to join, but you know, just a little bit more down. But it doesn't seem to be happening. Got two hairs just there and there. That are just on their own. It's like they, you know, they're solitary. They broke away from the pack. They didn't want to be with the rest of the beard. It's like they wanted to, we want to be our own beard. We don't want to be part of your gang we have our own mind our own thoughts we don't want to be brainwashed by your beard by your beard stories so maybe that's what it is they broke away maybe I'll have a new little beard there just there and there's two there maybe they'll mate and there'll be more produced. So when I was five, I used to have really, really, really curly hair. Really, really curly hair, really big. It was, uh, it didn't bother me, you know, when I was five or six. I didn't spend a lot of time looking in the mirror, being concerned about my appearance. You know, I didn't I was sitting there thinking, oh, I'm never going to get into Vogue. I'm never going to be on the front cover of Ma Maxim and Vogue. And I just want to be a catwalk model. And that did, didn't enter my mind. I wasn't interested in that stuff. I just wanted to chuck bottles at the gardener, which is a terrible thing to say. But I used to live in a place where there was a gardener, and he used to shout at us, and we used to chuck stuff at him. But I was a kid. I did, wasn't. I just went along, you know, a bit like with a beard, you know. There's some very young hairs there and they just go along with the crowd. They don't maybe question exactly what's going on. But really big hair. Really big. It made my head, I think, look a lot bigger than what it was. So I had this little body. I was five or six. Very few five or six year olds have big bodies. I mean, it's natural to have a small body, but my head was big. Not elephant man size, but just, it was big in comparison to my body. And I think it's probably maybe why I've had problems with my neck because it put a lot of strain on my neck from quite an early age. And it took me quite a long time to grow into my head, for my body to grow into it. So if things were into proportion. 
And then as I got older, I don't remember much about the type of haircuts that I used to have when I was seven, eight, nine, ten. I have a memory. It says I remember more how my brother's hair used to look because I used to see them. But I never really used to see my own hair. Because I just didn't look into the mirror. I suppose the only reason I looked into the mirror just maybe before going going out to school, make sure I got no bogeys, you know, just things like that. It wasn't, didn't really, wasn't that bothered about how my hair looked or anything like that. Then when I got to about 11, I started going to the Sea Cadets. And uh, so the Sea Cadets is a place where it's a mixture of things. It's those, there's some children might want to go join the Navy when they're older. Or, or they might be interested in sailing or uh, water sports or things like that. See, I was never really interested in water sports. I don't... Even now, I'm not really that interested in water sports. Because... I'm not really, really into water. I'm not, never swimming or anything like that. I'm not really, didn't really interest me. Still doesn't. Just not one, just not something that I've really been interested in. I have, because I was in the Sea Cadets, I was pushed into doing stuff. So I did learn to canoe a little bit. I learned to, you know, roll over and get back and I went on rafts and I went on boats and things like that. I nearly went water skiing once. But um, I decided against it. Once I was there, once I was in the water with the life jacket on. And... I really, it was so cold. Oh, so I just didn't do it in the end, but when I joined the Sea Cadets, it wasn't because I was interested in anything, I just, it just happened, you know when things just kind of just happen, I must have gone along there with a friend, and then we ended up staying, I mean I'm not staying forever, I mean we went home at the end, but sort of going back and and in fact I started before I was even old enough to start because I think it, you had to be 12 to start and I was 11 and they were 10 or whatever they just let me go anyway but once I started going there I think once a month or every two months or something they'd shave our heads not, not completely shaved but a crew cut maybe couple of inches or something and would all kind of have the same haircut and for a while for probably a good couple of years that was my hairstyle just a shaved head or you know very short it was okay I mean it was a bit of a novelty when it first happened it's a bit of a shock because I didn't realise how big my nose was until I had all my hair cut off. Like, oh my, really? Where did that come from? That's in the wrong place, surely. But yeah, so I just, I remember I used to put my hand through my hair and it was like, it was like stroking an action man's head. If you ever, if you ever had an action man when you was a kid, or if maybe now, it used to be really, um, they sort of like stroking their hair. It's nice. 
and that was what my my head used to feel like and then but you know because my hair level where it started was way down so it's you know I had a didn't have a very big forehead back then I'm thinking maybe it's over the last few years uh, maybe I've activated my brain a little bit and it, which has kind of grown my forehead maybe I don't know so I used to do that I used to have my hair cut there and then after that we used to have my stepmum's friend used to come around and cut my hair I mean, not just my hair, but all of our hairs. Not all of, not everyone's hair, just the people that lived in my house. And we used to, it used to be all right. And again, at that time, I'd, hair didn't seem that important. Didn't seem... I don't know, it just didn't seem worth really thinking about. It's just a thing. Oh, my hair, the same as, oh, I've got toenails. It's just, you know, it's the same thing. Although clearly it's not the same thing, but isn't it made of the same material, toenails and hair? Is it glucosade or something? I don't know. But it's sort of the same kind of um, material, I think. Korea soap. So I... When I got a little bit older, I started to become a bit aware, a bit more aware of my hair. I remember writing a poem or trying to write a poem, but I only managed to get one one sentence of it. I remember it. It was, uh, that's it. I think if I can remember it. I'm now aware of my hair. Yeah, that's as far as I got on that one. I used to like to write poems and songs when I was a kid. I fell in love with um, a girl at school called Sarah and I was writing love letters and poems and writing songs for her. I've talked about it in the past, uh, I don't remember if, because some of those videos and vlogs and you know things like that have been deleted so have gone forever but I might have I remember trying to think what the words were to the main song that I wrote for her was called Dear Sarah and uh, I won't, I'm not going to sing it because that wouldn't be fair but I think some of the words I think it was Dear Sarah how do you do? So I realised that that was a bit formal, wasn't it? Just, just real, just now, it just come to me. How do you do? It's a bit of a formal greeting. It's not very, uh, not very romantic. Not as romantic as I had wished it to be. That was how I, I was hoping it was going to come across as pure romance. A blissful, sentimental line of blossoming discovery of love. But it didn't. So, dear Sarah, how do you do? Hope you're missing me the way that I'm missing you. 
Now she didn't really know who I was. So the likelihood of her missing me was probably quite minimal. I mean, she knew who I was. I was the person that kept giving her love notes, but um, she did. You know, we hadn't dated or anything like that, and she didn't really know. I don't think she was sitting at home. Worried about my, you know, my nutrition or wondering, I wonder what Jason's up to. I'm not sure if she knew my name. So it's Dear Sarah, how do you do? Hope you're missing me the way that I'm missing you. Do you think about me in your dreams? If you do, think about out, out, what it means. Not always what it seems, it aims. Ns. Ooh. So, do you think about me in your dreams? Well, she doesn't really know who I am, apart from, you know, vaguely. Um, she's not thinking about me during the day. Chances are she's not dreaming about me. I do, I quite like the deepness of it. Bearing in mind I was, I was only 34 at the time. Now I was uh, 14 or 15, 14. And so do you think about me in your dreams? If you do, think about, out, 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 what it mean, it, it means. Ooh. Okay, the ooh part isn't really that relevant, but the th if you do, think about what it means. So that part is, it seems to be leading to a, some kind of philosophical question. So you're, you're dreaming about me. What could that mean? What could that, what could that be? What could be, what could be behind that? There's some kind of emotional longing that, you know, something that you need that only I can fulfill and then the bit um, so do you think about me in your dreams if you do think about out out what it means ooh not always what it seems yeah not always what it seems it aims So, I'm quite pleased with that line. Not always what it seems. It's a bit... It could mean one thing, it could mean another thing, it may mean nothing. But it's a questioning. It's a... Uh, well, if you think about me, what does it mean? And if you think you know what it means, maybe it means something different. Not always what it seems. Now this next bit I'm pretty, pretty pleased with. Well, I was at the time. And 
thinking back now, I realised how I managed to move on to be a, a therapist. Feelings are not always shown during the day. So, feelings are not always shown during the day. But when you go to sleep, all your worries drift away. A A A. So that was quite nice, I think. So f feelings are not always shown during the day. I mean, we're busy, aren't we? We can't always. We might have the feelings, but maybe not necessarily manage to be you know to attribute those particular feelings to uh, a stimuli you know maybe a reason you might not quite be sure why those feelings are arising and sometimes the feelings don't arise be too busy to experience feelings you know especially when I was at school I was busy hiding things from the teacher and lending money to other pupils so I didn't really you know sometimes I was I was distracted by other things So feelings are not always shown during the day, but when you go to sleep, all your worries drift away. A, A, A. A. And I like that, especially as I've been focusing on helping people to release stress and, you know, helping people with sleep issues. So the idea that when you go to sleep, your worries can just drift away. A, A, A. And that seems like quite a, quite an intelligent thing to know at that age. Or quite a deep kind of thinking. So the next line is uh, then your feelings start to arise showing something that you didn't realize eyes 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 So, you know, then your feelings start to arise. So you asleep. And I suppose, you know, sometimes when we're asleep, some of the issues maybe sort themselves out. When you're asleep, we heal. Our bodies heal. Our minds heal. I didn't know that back then. And there's a sense of comfort and calmness and looseness and safety that we experience when asleep comfort safety and healing so then your feelings start to arise showing something that you didn't realize i think that that sentence there was wishful thinking on my part I think I was hoping that she was going to be asleep and wake up and realise that she was in love with me. So the next bit, I thought I'd just, you know, I needed to do something original. I wanted to, because I was quite pleased with how the song was going. I needed a chorus, because I've just done the first verse. I needed a chorus, catchy, 
of course you're not going to get the real drift of catchiness without me singing it but I'm not going to be singing it so if I just say it so I thought I'd say something do something very original but also I needed a way of including her name in the chorus so I couldn't figure out how to do it I started off by doing something original and I thought okay I love you there's nothing that I can do but I wanted to include a name in it and I couldn't figure out how and then it just I was thinking about it I think that night I watched Doctor Who I kept just trying to sort of mull over how can I fit her name and then it came to me Sarah I love you there's nothing that I can do there's something that you do for me can't you see E E E so I think that's quite self explanatory I'm just trying to express to her that there's something there's a feeling there that I kind of I don't really understand it but I had a feeling of love real sense of love so the feeling's uncontrollable the next line the feeling's uncontrollable I'm going out of my mind Eind, Eind, Eind There's nothing that I can do I didn't know what to something to rhyme with do and I wanted the last line of the chorus and I wanted to, to have Sarah's name in it but something to rhyme with do so I just went for a walk in the garden I think at that time of year there was conkers on the floor because we had a conker tree and I used to kick the conkers around some of the conkers were a bit soggy others were like really hard and I never really got into the whole um, the sport of conker conkers you know, but and I was just sitting under the tree, getting a wet bum because it was it was wet on the floor. Not quite sure why I did that. And it came to me, the last line of the chorus. Sarah I love you Ooh ooh There was another another um verse but I can't remember what it is So that's, it's not the only song I ever wrote. I wrote a song when I was eight uh, called Mandy. Let's have a drink there. Just trying to think the name, how that song went. Okay, dear, <laughs> dear Mandy, how did 
do you do? No, it didn't. I'm joking. It's, it was Mandy Baby. Listen to me. Mandy dear. Oh, no. Mandy Baby. Listen to me. Mandy Baby. I want you to hear. Mandy Baby. Listen to me. Mandy Baby. I want you to see. That's it. Mandy dear, I want you to hear. I don't want a single tear. I love you Mandy. Mandy I do. I just want to know if you love me too. Just say something I want to know. Just say something like hello. Oh Mandy, I love you. And that was the, that was called Mandy. And I wrote that for a girl that I met. I don't know if I was eight, I might have been a bit older, I might have been 10. I might have even been 11. I'm sure I was eight, but I might have been older. But I was on holiday with my family and we were in a, uh, like a caravan or something and I met this girl I used to be quite good with girls back then and kind of really really liked her always liked girls when I was younger really just I don't know there's something about girls that just appealed to me much more than boys. So, I don't know what it was. Yeah, even like young, when I was very young, just found girls to be more fun to be around. So I played with her for probably the afternoon and then I think the caravan part we was in was, I imagine there was some kind of a, not nightclub, but there was a, a, a social club where you go in there and I probably, at that age, I was probably just running around with her and just playing chase or something. But I really liked her and then she she had to leave the next day. It's funny that I still remember her name though. Maybe that's a way to remember things. Write songs about them. That would be a good way to remember the alphabet, wouldn't it? I wonder why no one's ever done that. Written a song for the alphabet to help people remember it. Ah, could be a new invention. When I was about 15, maybe 14, 15, I decided to dye my hair brown. Because I've got dark brown hair anyway, but I decided to dye it basically the same color that I already had it, which is, you know, I think it's a, it's a test, isn't it? Instead of just going for some completely different color, I went for something that was a little bit, it was more reddy brown rather than dark brown. And I had a half perm 
at one point as well. And then when I was 16, I went to the hairdressers and I had my hair cut short and I dyed, got my, my hair dyed blonde, completely blonde. And It, I only had it like that for a short time and then I, I, I cut it off and basically went bald and I grew my hair again and then when I was about 20 21 I decided to grow my hair long, you know, really proper long. And I knew that I'd have to go through the period where it was completely curly and distracting to overhead planes, basically really a bit, a bit all over the place. So I decided to do it anyway. I think I wore a hat quite a bit at the time. And eventually it was long enough to put into a ponytail. And once it was long enough for that, then I didn't have to worry about the curls because everything was kind of straightened. And I let it grow and it got to about the length for the, the middle of my back. And I had it, I had it like that until 1994, the summer. And I used to go into my hairdressers, the barbers, I used to go in there and just have a little trim. Because you still got to have the, the ends cut off of it. So I used to go in there maybe every six months, three months, four months. And he'd always used to get excited and he'd pretend to cut off the ponytail. And he'd say, oh, please, he'd say, please let me cut it off. I said, no. He said, please. I said, no. She said, go on, I said, no, listen, I'm being serious now, I've got a time limit here, can you just please just do what I ask? That was an uncomfortable haircut, but I eventually one day, I just couldn't get my brush through my hair, and I, I just thought that's it, so I went round the corner and I said, do it and honestly he got so excited I'm sure he lactated a bit and he came and he he cut it off and I had a nice little haircut and it was lovely it felt very my head felt cooler because it was summer I felt a bit more freer in a sense because I, I wasn't my hair was being pulled into a ponytail so it was quite um, quite tight a lot of the time you know my scalp was being pulled so now I felt a bit more relaxed and then Later on, I just had like normal haircuts, really. Same kind of hairstyle for years. Just short at the side, short at the back. A little bit on top, you know. And then, in 2002, I started shaving my head again. Which was a little bit of a surprise for people that I worked with because they'd never seen me without hair. And I think one person thought I was ill, but I just like, no, I just cut it. 
and I had it short, really, really short, like shaved or crew cut for absolutely years and years and years. And now the last few years, the last 10 years, I kind of go in between of letting it grow a little bit and then just shaving it all off. And the last time I shaved it completely was probably three months ago, possibly two months, three months. This is how it's ended up. This is my hair now. It's very, um, I don't know, I think it's all right. It's, it's just hair, isn't it, really? But I'm thinking of letting it grow long. I don't know if I'll bother with the ponytail, though. I might just let it just go wild. So that's what I'm thinking of doing. So that's the story of my haircuts throughout the years. Now I'm going to go and do something else. So thank you for listening and watching. Bye. Lots of love.